basic wiring of the V1000, as you look into the terminal strips, A1 and AC are going to be your speed reference to the VFD. This will take in a 0 to 10 DC signal and will reference the VFD to run at a certain speed. S1 and SC are a dry contact closure. When this closure is connected, the drive will go into run mode. Whenever it is broken, the drive will stop. Our S3 and SC terminals on the Yaskawa V1000 drive are very simplistic and easy to troubleshoot. The terminals are designed for our safety interlocks, for the PBO or our smoke detector. These are options on the unit and may or may not be on the unit. The S3 and SC contacts are normally dictated by a blue and white wire. This is designed if there were a safety to occur within the unit, either the PBO or smoke detector, that this will kill the 24 volts AC to the unit. The two red wires here, MC and MB, are tied in with our PBO phase brownout protection or a smoke detector. Now this does depend on what has been ordered for the unit. These are our options. Now let me re-emphasize that a BB flashing on the drive is not a fault. What the drive is in is in a safety. Now on this unit we have the PBO and we have the smoke detector. So at power up, if the PBO or the smoke detector are tripped, the drive is going to flash BB. Again, this is not a fault condition. I will demonstrate by killing power to our unit, our drives are going to go into a BB and go off. Again, not a fault. Now that the drives are fully powered down, bringing power back up, they will flash BB. This is to allow the PBO to make and for all the safety circuits to make. Once every, all the safety circuits have been made, the drive will return to service. Next, I'll show you how easy it is to make a programming change to the VFD. From your main menu, you use your up arrow key or down arrow key until you reach PAR on the VFD. Pressing enter will bring you into the programming parameters. For today, we will make a change to D101. So using the arrow key, until I'm to D, I can use the side arrow key to move over and change D1 to D2, and then O1. Pressing enter, right now it's programmed for 25 hertz. Using the arrow keys, I can change this to 30. Press enter. Pressing escape will bring me back to my main menu. The VFD is now set up to run at 30 hertz in a CAV application. So whenever it receives a run command, the VFD will run at 30 hertz. Some of the programming parameters can be changed during runtime and some cannot. Please refer to the guide. Now that we've made a programming change to the VFD, there is an option to go in and see what has been changed. From the main menu, using the arrow keys, you will go to verify. Pressing enter will show you the first parameter that has been changed to the VFD. Now these are only parameters that have been changed from the factory default. Using the arrow key, I can move up through the parameters until I see the programming parameter I've changed, D101. Pressing enter will show me the value that is set in the drive right now. Again, pressing escape will bring me back to the main menu. The monitor feature on the VFD is a very helpful tool to help troubleshoot. To get to the monitor points on the VFD from the main menu, again, using the arrow keys, until monitor is displayed, M-O-N. Pressing the enter key will bring you into the monitor points. U1 is going to be your active status. 
This will show things uh, such as amperage, or voltage, or uh, power of the VFD. U2 is your fault trace. This will show you what happened in the VFD during its last fault. U3 on the V1000 will show you up to 10 faults and the time between those faults. On the J1000, it will show you your previous fault. To move through the points, you use the arrow key up or down to navigate through U1. Pressing escape will bring you back to the U1, U2, and U3. Again, moving through the parameters, you can hit enter, and it'll be displayed. Another common customer service call is how do I change the speed of the BFD while it's running out in the field. For the application that we have here, it's actually set up for VAV, but for our de demonstration purposes, we have it set as a CAV unit, constant air volume. This means that at a run signal to the VFD, the VFD will run at one speed. This speed right now is set for 30 hertz. If I needed to change the speed by pressing the enter key and using the arrow keys on the VFD, I can arrow over and up until I get to 35 hertz. But it's still flashing, hit the enter. It says end, and now we are at 35 hertz. This will remain true if you turn off the unit or throughout the operation of the unit. This is saved as a constant in the VFD. As discussed earlier, this unit is set up for VAV operation, which means that our Wattmaster controls are going to send the VFDs a signal to run the fans at a certain speed. If you need to adjust the speed, or run it at a fixed speed, you will need to put the VFD in hand mode or manual operation. This is very easy to do and can be done by pressing the L, O, R, E button. Once it is engaged, the green light by it will be lit up. From there, you will hit the enter button and be able to arrow over and change the hertz that you want the VFD to run at. For this, we'll have it run at 25 hertz, enter, escape, and now if I press the run button, the VFD will come online. Now you can see frequency out, my drive is coming online. You can see my amperage, and I can see my voltage. Pressing the stop button, I will bring the VFD down. Once the VFD is completely powered down, I will go ahead and give it a run command from relay one. Now you can see the VFD is coming back up for VAV operation. Since the Wattmaster control is not sending the VFD a signal right now, it's going to run at its minimum speed. Minimum speed normally is 20.4 hertz, or 34%. Now I will show you how to go into local slash hand mode for the VFD while the VFD is running in VAV op operation. As we walk up to the VFD, we will not be able to put it in local or remote mode while it is running. We'll have to do an emergency stop. You can do this by just pressing the stop button. Again, with the arrow keys, we can see that the VFD is fully powered down. Going into local, it is now lit up. 25 hertz and run. I can now see it's coming up to the 25 hertz. Now, it is very imperative for proper operation of the unit that this be taken out of local slash hand mode for the operation of the unit. Power down. I'm now taking it out of local. 
and the VFD will start to come back up to its VFD operation. Another common question is how to reset a drive in a faulty condition. For the unit I have behind me, we have the two supply fan VFDs and two power exhaust VFDs. If a fault condition happens on either of the supply VFDs, it will kill the 24 volts for all the controls to the unit, thus shutting down the unit. If a fault condition happens on the power exhaust, it will shut down both power exhaust motors. However, the unit will still be in a run condition with the blowers. In order to remove a fault, you must remove the run command from the VFD first before you can remove the fault on the VFD. To do this with the power exhaust VFDs, you would need to break the run command via start stop relay. Once you remove the run command, you would press the reset button on either or both VFDs and then reapply the run command. However, on the supply fan, since it removes the 24 volts to the unit, you will only need to press the reset button since the run command is already disabled due to the fault. Two of the most common faults are the OH1 fault, which is an overheat of the VFD, and the LF fault, which is a phase loss detection on the drive. For the OH1 fault, if you were to open the airflow plug located in the control cabinet, this will help to cool the control cabinet and clear your OH1 fault. Another possible solution to clear the fault is the fan located above the VFD. If you ensure that it is clean and in working order, this may also clear your fault. To clear the LF fault, the phase loss detection fault, you need to make a programming change to the VFD. This is programming parameter L807. This parameter should be set to zero. Press enter, it is saved. Press escape, and that brings you back to your main menu. Other common faults are the overvoltage, OV, the undervoltage, and the overcurrent, OC. Motor overload is an OL1 fault. Drive overload is an OL2 fault. If standard reset procedures do not clear the fault, please refer to the guide for possible solutions. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to change out a Yaskawa VFD. Keep in mind that the first thing that you should always do before working on the unit is to turn off power to the unit. First you will need to unscrew the screw for the control panel. Unscrew the screw here and remove this panel for it. Now that you have exposed the circuit board, there is a small tab underneath the circuit board. Pressing in on this tab and pulling down dislodges the board. You will need to remove the ground wire. Now the board is removed. This board has all the programming functions of the drive. Undoing the screw here and removing this panel. You will then be able to remove the VFD, replace it with the new one that you have, reconnect your motor wires and line wires to the VFD, and reconnect the circuit board. Reconnect your ground wire, and replace all panels. In order for the new VFD to be able to see the programming instructions from the old one, you will need to go into programming parameter A1-03 and set 5550 as the programming parameter.